Our 1973 series on restaurant sanitation, which we called Not on the Menu, has spurred reforms in the industry not only in Dade County and Florida, but in the rest of the country as well. Other television cities and other stations using Not on the Menu as a model have made their communities aware, sometimes painfully, that what is behind the kitchen door cannot and should not be hidden. WTVJ turned the spotlight on restaurant sanitation beginning in March of last year, following Dade health inspectors on routine checks. What we found was often not pretty. In fact, close to 60% of the eateries routinely inspected were rated poor or worse. And what could the health department do? Virtually nothing. Due to a serious deficiency in the law, the health department at the time had no enforcement power. But because of our not on the menu reports, night after night, the public indignation grew. On June 5, 1973, the Metro Commission gave unanimous approval over industry objections to a new law that gave the Dade Health Department the enforcement power they needed the authority to close down restaurants that posed health hazards to the public. Ten days later, on June 15th, the day of our final report, that law went into effect. The big questions now are, what has the health department done with that law, and what has the law meant for the eating public? Acting Food Hygiene Coordinator, Charles Alexander. It means for every uh, person that eats out into the restaurants, they are having a much cleaner and a much safer place to eat. What about the difference in attitude over the past years of restaurateurs? Oh, the uh, difference in attitude has changed tremendously, Bob. They, they cooperate, they want to cooperate, and uh, there's a few hardcore people which uh, obviously we've had to close because they do not want to cooperate, but overall we're getting good cooperation and uh, getting a lot of respect from the uh, restaurateurs. The new law is no panacea, and the health department knows it but it is one heck of an enforcement tool and it is being used. In the year prior to Not on the Menu and the Closure Law, there were no restaurants closed. Since June 15, 1973, though, there have been 159 closures, including the latest one earlier today, the Sambos at 2701 Collins Avenue on Miami Beach. All dirty restaurants are given a chance to clean up before being told to close. Most cooperate willingly, some don't. Just last month, the health department had to close the Rusty Pelican, a well-known Key Biscayne restaurant, which the department says has not been cooperative. It has since reopened. The quaint Country Store restaurant, a Coconut Grove landmark, was also closed last month until it cleaned up. And the Golden Nugget restaurant at 2700 West Flagler represents what the health department says now is its major problem, that of repeat violators. The West Flagler Golden Nugget has been closed down three times since December, correcting its violations after each closure but slipping back into its old habits afterward. Beginning tomorrow, we will go back into the field with health inspectors each day to see how much improvement a year has brought and to see just how much is still not on the menu. Last year, the Florida Restaurant Association fought us all the way. This time, we hope the industry, too, will be with us. Jim? Broward teachers plan their salary structure. <laughs> Bob Mayer's latest series, Still Not on the Menu, enters its second night tonight with a close look behind one restaurant's kitchen door. Bob? Our ground rules this year as we attempt to find out what is still not on the menu will be slightly different than the last time around. While we will be going with health inspectors to many restaurants on a random basis, we will also be returning to some of the same establishments we visited last year. As always, we will not bring our cameras into any restaurant without management permission. The Town Restaurant at 153 Northeast 1st Street in downtown Miami was chosen as our first stop because it was one of last year's worst. Suffice it to say, inspectors said last summer the town was absolutely filthy. Publicity because of that inspection last year. Because of it, the owners closed the place down and eventually sold it. The new owners, according to Inspector Charles Alexander, have done a good job in bringing up the town's standards, although much remains to be done. Owners Ross O'Country and Manny Lieberman were polite, cooperative, and allowed our cameras inside. Outer food preparation areas were clean, including the glass cooler cases, which showed no evidence of filth buildup. One reach-in refrigerator obviously was dirty, and inspectors ordered it to be cleaned up. The meat slicer blade had only fresh meat on it, indicating regular cleaning, and the town's dining area and restrooms were also in good shape. As for the ice machine, it was clean, but two ice storage boxes were not, allowing for possible ice contamination. Inspector Alexander found too many of the supposedly clean dishes dirty, a serious or red violation, and he said almost every juice glass was unclean. 
While the dishwasher temperature was more than adequate, the machine's jets were clogged. That was the problem. They hampered the operation. The town was storing its butter in ice, which is not allowed. And in its bakery, we found the restaurant's most serious violation, flies everywhere. Management was told to rid the place of flies within 24 hours or face closure. The bakery also had some dirty equipment, which employees went to work on immediately and cleaned up. Otherwise, the town now boasts several good points. Its walls, ceilings, and floors are all brand new. Its main kitchen area is clean, even under equipment. And exhaust filters are grease-free. Walk-in refrigerators and freezers, also new, are clean and neat, and all the food was covered as required by law. Inspector Alexander talked about the town's overall sanitation rating. Rating of the town restaurant today would be fair, Bob, due to the fact they had a lot of flies in the establishment, in the bakery area. What about their attitude with the violations you pointed out to them? Well, the uh, attitude is excellent, Bob. They've taken care of most of the violations while we were there. That inspection was done yesterday. Today, Alexander reports all of the town's red violations, including the flies, have been eliminated, bringing the uh, rating of the restaurant now to very good. Tomorrow night, another restaurant. Jim? Bob, the latest episode of True Grit, which is what North Miami Beach residents are calling their water supply. Seems that way, Jim. The Royal Castle at 1540 South Dixie Highway in Carl Gables ranked at the bottom of the cleanliness scale one year ago with a rating of filthy to find out if the threat of closure under the Dade Health Department's new law had any effect on the restaurant. We followed Inspector Joe Reese to its back door. Reese was allowed inside, but photographer Warren Jones and I were not. No. Nope. Why not? Against rules and regulations. Marjorie Rogers told me that management didn't like it when Channel 4 was allowed inside last year to photograph the restaurant. As it turned out, management probably would have been much happier this year had we been let in. Uh, the inspection today showed that uh, all areas of sanitation were much improved as opposed to what we found last year. There was no accumulation of filth. Things in general were much better. Their uh, reach and refrigerators were nice and clean. Generally, there were one or two that needed some work. What were the violations? Well, there were two major violations that we found. The garbage was a bit of a problem. The bin was left uncovered, which might possibly lead to fly breeding. And their dish machine wasn't quite what it should have been. Their arms and slots were not as clean as they should be. They should be cleaned at least once a day. What good points can you talk about about this Royal Castle? Well, generally, I think the, the attitude was much improved. Uh, in fact, the uh, area supervisor came in, and he was real cooperative and really trying to do his job. Well, how would you rate the Royal Castle at 1540 South Dixie Highway? Well, at the present time, I would have to rate it uh, probably uh, between fair to satisfactory. Again, those inspection results apply only to the Royal Castle at 1540 South Dixie Highway. Tomorrow night, we'll take another look at a fast service chain restaurant. Jim? looked considerably better than it did at the same time last year, while at the same time, fewer restaurants are permitting our cameras inside so the public can see for itself. At the Denny's restaurant at Biscayne Boulevard and 121st Street, the manager had left word with the man in charge that Channel 4 be kept out. The manager says that, no, I can't let him in. Why not? Because he says they always show the bad parts, not the good parts. Anyone who has ever watched any part of our series knows that is simply not true. The Denny's at 12105 Biscayne Boulevard did have several violations. Its outside garbage bin was left open. Toxic materials were found near food contact surfaces. Several wall holes were found in the kitchen and bathroom, and inspectors said the restaurant did have a light infestation of mice. But there were many pluses. Denny's refrigerators were termed very clean. Its food storage practices were called excellent. Dishes were clean. And in general, the facility itself and most of the equipment in the restaurant were in very good shape. Well, due to the fact that they had taken care of all the violations that we pointed out, with the exception of the holes in the walls and the mice, it must be rated fair. If it hadn't been for the mice problem, they would be in excellent condition. At the Howard Johnson's restaurant at 16600 Northwest 2nd Avenue, the hostess politely told us we could not accompany the inspectors. A moment later, the man in charge slammed the back door in our faces. He was later identified as Howard Johnson's district manager, Sam Thurmond. But again, this Howard Johnson's, according to inspectors, while known for problems in the past, is now rated very good. 
That familiar open garbage violation was present, and parts of an ice machine and an ice storage chest and some refrigerator gaskets were dirty. Salads were stacked one on another, a violation, and again, toxic materials were found too close to food contact surfaces. Most everything else, though, including the meat slicer, other equipment, and even the restrooms were all very clean, and most of the other violations were corrected on the spot. Two more restaurants, both in good shape, and both refused us entry. We just don't understand, because a clean restaurant has nothing to hide from a camera. Jim? Jim? Bob Mayer has been checking out restaurants with Dade County Health Inspectors again, and the news tonight is bad, Bob. Right, Jim. Unfortunately, we learned today there is an awful lot that is still not on the menu in some area restaurants. Proof of that is the landmark Pumpernick's restaurant at 12599 Biscayne Boulevard in North Miami. Channel 4 was not allowed inside because owner Manny Zinn said he didn't need the publicity. I don't see why we should have TV cameras in here. We have inspectors in here all the time. Are you afraid of what the cameras will find? Nope, absolutely none. Are you free of violations? Free of violations. To say that Zinn's remark was inaccurate would be a gross understatement. In fact, the Pumpernicks at 12599 Biscayne Boulevard had scores of violations, filling the fronts and backs of two and a half inspection forms. The most serious violation was found in two 100-pound sacks of sugar which were contaminated and infested with mice. Inspector Charles Alexander himself saw six of the rodents scurrying about in and on the sugar, and he ordered the food thrown out immediately. Familiar red violations like uncovered food, food stored on the floor, toxic materials near food, and open garbage were also found, but were corrected during the inspection. Alexander found numerous other, though less serious, violations, including dirty walk-in refrigerators, what he termed filthy pot storage racks and dirty kitchen walls. Well, cleanliness throughout the establishment was bad, Bob. I found a, a heavy accumulation of filth behind their stoves and ranges. And also one of the ice machines was quite filthy. With what? With an accumulation of uh, black slime that may fall into the ice. They had been using and uh, cleaning some of their plastic spoons, which is to be used only once. Mr. Zen threw that out at the time I was there, so that correction, uh, violation is correct. What would you term the overall sanitation rating of the Pumpernicks here? Filthy. Those results apply only to the Pumpernicks at 12599 Biscayne Boulevard, where Alexander says a potential health hazard did exist at the time of his inspection. The restaurant's good points? Well, its restrooms and some of its equipment, including stoves, ranges, and a meat slicer, were clean, and its dishwashing was good. As we left, steam cleaning crews were already at work. But if the more serious red violations are not all eliminated by Monday, the restaurant will be closed down. No law is perfect, and neither is the restaurant closure law given to the Dade County Health Department last June. While the department can now shut down an eatery if it poses health hazards, nothing prevents a restaurant from getting dirty again between inspections. What was found Friday at the Pumpernick's restaurant at 12599 Biscayne Boulevard in North Miami was not pretty. In short, the place was, in the inspector's own words, filthy. Owner Manny Zinn told me today that his restaurant has lost two-thirds of its patrons because of our report on Friday, and that he has been up all weekend cleaning and correcting violations. After a recheck today, the health department was more than satisfied. It would be considered uh, fantastic, I believe. Uh, due to the fact that 99% uh, of all the items that they were uh, noted on uh, Friday were uh, corrected over the weekend. There was no evidence of mice throughout the store, none at all. All the other red items, such as their toxic materials, the garbage, and the food storage practices were taken care of. What about other items above and beyond the red ones that they were given additional time for? You mentioned filth buildups build uh, throughout the establishment. What has happened in the area of cleaning? <laughs> that would have to be considered really fantastic, Bob. They've done a, a very, very fine job of cleaning the entire establishment of all the uh, buildup of filth that was there Friday. They've cleaned all the equipment properly and uh, painted the walls, and it's in uh, very good condition as of today. Inspector Alexander says the overall sanitation rating of the Pumpernicks at 12599 Biscayne Boulevard in North Miami is now very good. Alexander's only regret was that the restaurant was not in that shape on Friday. Jim?
The Post and Paddock is a posh eatery at 9650 East Bay Harbor Drive on Bay Harbor Island. The manager did not allow us to accompany health inspectors, but he did indicate he was quite familiar with Still Not on the Menu. Do you think we've been fair to the restaurants during our series? 